and how these candidates plan uh, plan on addressing these issues. Um, we got many of these questions from polls. We polled the student body on issues that they found to um, be important. Um, so yeah, we wanted to give a special thanks to the candidates for attending this evening, um, as well as all that helped to plan the event. So we want to thank our faculty advisor, Mrs. Warner, um, our school administration, uh, principal Dr. Fitzgerald, uh, Dr. Byrne, Dr. Zigarelli, and Mrs. Short, um, and to the students asking questions tonight, it will uh, switch off between myself, um, Claire Killian, Alex Ye, um, who are juniors, and then freshmen Felicia Ambrogi and Holbrook Langley, who are uh, freshmen, we're all right, his school students. Um, so tonight, Claire Killian will be holding time just to go over the rules for uh, debate for tonight. Um, we will begin with three minute introductions from each candidate. Claire will signal a red pen um, when each minute has passed. Um, and then when time is up, she'll wave and um, make herself pretty noticeable. Uh, so if the candidates want to pin her, um, that could be pretty helpful in uh, keeping time. And then um, for questioning, each candidate will receive three minutes to answer each question. And we will begin um, with Josh and then proceed with Danielle and uh, switch off each time for orders. So um, if now the candidates wanna begin, um, starting with Josh on our uh, your three minute introduction, um, take it away. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Mayor Josh Cohn, Josh for purposes of this evening. Um, my thanks to the Civics Club for organizing this event, to my opponent for participating, and to all watching. I should introduce myself. I was born and raised in New York City and went to Columbia and then NYU Law. But for a year in California, I spent all my 36 years of legal practice based in New York City. I moved to Rye 30 years ago, shortly after my daughter was born. I became mayor after the Rye Democratic Committee took note of my activism in the battle against many cell towers of a few years ago and asked me if I might run. I jumped in because it was a completely unexpected opportunity to use my skills to serve the community that I had known only as a commuter, loving Rye on the weekends and leaving it every working morning. I was not then and am not now a member of any political party. That was okay with the Rye Democratic Committee three years ago and okay with the Rye Democratic Committee now. I'm the endorsed candidate of the Democratic Committee and the cross-endorsed candidate of the Republican Committee. Why did that happen? I think it's because the philosophy of nonpartisanship that I and most of my colleagues brought to the city's business has worked for the city. The proposition is simple. Try to do what's best for the city and put the politics away. I take my cue from Fiorello LaGuardia's famous quote that there's neither a Democrat or Republican way of picking up the garbage. Garbage pickup and other services is what the city does. Mostly it's the stuff that, if well run, should not attra attract politics. The reason I have the endorsement of the two parties is that things are running well. With is always room for improvement, but still we have created a plan now being launched to renew long neglected and unglamorous city infrastructure. We've revived the city's finance committee and senior advocacy committee and appointed the city's first female judge. We've settled the long running Save the Sound pollution suit We've accelerated road resurfacing. We've imposed a moratorium on certain land use decisions affecting housing density and loss of green space. We've kept the city under the tax cap, still AAA credit rating and without a deficit after the pandemic. That's just a sampling. We intend to follow through. I'm hopeful that I've done mayor well enough to get to do mayor again. I look forward to your questions. Thank you.
Danielle, uh, feel free, your time starts now. You're muted. There we go. We'll Let's restart. start that again, shall we? All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the Civics Club, and thank you, um, everyone, for, for tuning in. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I am a first-generation American-born. My mother's family were Holocaust survivors who immigrated to the Lower East Side, and I spent um, a lot of my childhood overseas in London and then Israel, and I attended an American international school. Uh, I served two years in the Israeli army as a non-commissioned officer working as a liaison with international peacekeeping forces. After I completed my service, I returned back to the U.S. to attend university where I studied theater. And after I graduated, I lived in New York and then Los Angeles as an actor before entering the business world. I spent several years in marketing before setting up my own consulting business focused on talent recruitment. As an adult, I spent some time abroad living in Tel Aviv and Istanbul, and then returned to New York City before my husband, Dan, and I fell in love with Rye, where we wanted to put our roots down. And in Rye, I became deeply involved in the community. And in 2015, I turned to my husband and I said, I wanted to quit my job and run for office. And so I did. And I became a board member a community synagogue. I'm a member of the Rye Rotary. And in 2016, as a council member, I frequently spoke out about the worrying rise of hate crimes and hateful rhetoric. And in 2017, I reestablished the Rye Human Rights Commission after it had lain dormant for nearly two decades and became its first chair, which I currently still am. Subsequently, I became a co-founder of Pride, in 2019, I decided not to run for re-election. However, it is clear to me that there are urgent issues facing our city. And as mayor, it would be my top priority to reinstate the master plan, a process that has been ignored during this mayor's tenure. A, ma a master plan is a critical policy and planning document that serves as a blueprint for our city. It's a critical to the resilience of our city, providing a roadmap to enhance quality of life, social equity, manage growth while protecting the city's dwindling open spaces. And in the absence of long-term plan, piecemeal zoning amendments and ad hoc policy directions have led to a lack of cohesion in land use purposes. The lack of understanding and support for our community needs, actively stalling and attempting to dismantle the popular food scrap recycling program, despite an overwhelming support, and now with the county's new contract, a financial benefit to the city. It has been and continues to be my passion to participate and contribute where I can in service to our community. To be mayor means to represent all the people of Rye in a transparent and respectful manner, listening to stakeholders across our community from residents, local businesses, and our treasured community organizations is critical. Thank you so it much, Danielle. We'll be moving into the question section now. Okay, uh, so we're going to start this uh, specific, specific question. We're going to have Josh go first, uh, have three minutes, and then Danielle. Um, so for the first question, it is, what are your plans as mayor to reopen the town safely, uh, as safely and as efficiently as possible, especially in terms of supporting Purchase Street and small businesses? Okay. So the, the plan to reopen the town is really one uh, that involves following the governor's orders and to some extent the interpretation of those orders from the county. And so we follow that rapidly and we're going to move as quickly as possible. <clears throat> By June 7th, we expect to have City Hall reopened on a limited basis. You may know that we had, as I put it, turned City Hall inside out during the pandemic by making all municipal services or virtually all electronically available. We're going to have 
some controls on access to City Hall. There will be mask requirements. There, there, there will be rules suitable to the period of uncertainty that, that, that we're in. And we're going to go step by step the same way with respect to everything we do, looking carefully, particularly at Rye Rec. At Rye Rec, we've been following essentially school rules with respect to masks and distancing. And we'll do that at probably at least so long as school is in session. There's some concern, of course, about, about the, the warming weather and mask wearing in warming weather. And we're looking at that. With regard to Purchase Street, uh, we're going to again proceed carefully. Uh, you may know that we had a Purchase Street session at our last City Council meeting. We had input from the Chamber of Commerce. We had input from a variety of businesses. We will have yet another meeting. We've asked the Chamber of Commerce, which presented a plan to go back to the business community on Purchase Street and essentially verify that plan. And then the City Council will need to consider in collaboration with the businesses on Purchase Street and really in collaboration with residents, what should happen on Purchase Street this summer. My own expectation is that this summer will be a very different summer from last summer. I think Purchase Plaza last summer was a lifesaver for all the businesses there. I can't say that every business made it, but uh, for the businesses that did, I think that uh, I think Purchase Plaza was a very good thing. Uh, it certainly was a good thing for people in the town and for our sense of community as we went through the pandemic. I don't see that need reoccurring, and I'm going to be taking that into consideration as I make my own decision. Thank you. All right, Danielle, whenever you're ready. Okay, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, so um, what are your plans as mayor to reopen the town as safely and efficiently as possible, especially in terms of supporting Purchase Street and small businesses. So, as far as opening the city, um, again, as the mayor said, you know, we are, um, we do respond um, to the rules that come down from the state and from the county. So, as far as how we open, those are dictated. Um, from the higher ups. So I'm going to spend my time focusing on Purchase Plaza. Now we know that 2021 is not 2020. And what, what we know um, is that the commerce in our downtown is, is it's essential to our community. The restaurants, the stores, retailers, florists, and we want to support all of those essential parts of our community. Um, closing Purchase Plaza or the downtown, um, because it's not, it's not only downtown. We have businesses that are on Purchase Street. We have businesses that are all over Rye. So we want to look at the economic development all over Rye. We want to make sure that the development, the economic viability all over Rye can be sustained throughout 2021. We want to make sure that... Uh, that the approach to that is equitable. Um, we know that 2021 is not 2020. We can do it in a, in a sustainable way. Um, I think that we have to reimagine the way that people will be shopping, the way that people will be parking. Um, we have been approached. We know that the mayor was approached last year by uh, retailers asking them, asking him not to close uh, the downtown completely. They were ignored. So I believe that we do not want to do that again. Um, but we want outdoor seating. And there can be a way to do all of those things um, and approach it in a fair, uh, in a fair way. Um, but I think we have to reimagine um, the way downtown looks. 
um, and not take away parking because people are going to park downtown again. And traffic last year on Theodore Frem um, was a nightmare because Con Edison opened the streets and we were not prepared for that. So we need to take in to that uh, into account uh, of those situations as well. All right, Danielle, you still have some time left. If you're done speaking, we can easily move into the next question. Sure. Perfect. All right, thank you so much. Okay, um, I'll be asking the next question. So what are your views on the race task force implemented by the school and how do you plan to build on this in the town of Rye? And Danielle, you can answer first and then Josh. Sure. Um, so what do I think of the race task force in, in Rye? So, the task force, the race task force in the school was in direct response to the Black Lives Matter rally and the requests that came out of um, the rally and the Instagram BIPOC. I think a lot of what we saw, um, this discrimination, which is a positive response and the need um, from from the request from the students. And I think that that was a good first step and I support it. There should be a community effort to have conversations about race and bias and discrimination in, this, in the city and in our country. We do not live in a bubble. And I believe that students our youth are asking us to have conversations about race, about discrimination, um, and about the bias that either they themselves have experienced or that they are seeing. There is no place for hate in Rye. What happened in the bathroom in the Rye High School is unacceptable. We cannot tolerate it. We should never tolerate it. And we should continue to speak out against hate in all forms. I am proud to be the chair of the Rye Human Rights Commission. I am proud to be a co-founder of Pride. I'm proud of the work that we as organizations will continue to do in Rye, I'm proud to have written a letter that speaks and denounces the hate. And I will continue to do that as mayor. Perfect, all right, thank you so much, Ms. Tiger Epstein. Uh, you still have some more time. Would you like to allow Josh to respond? I think, I think, uh, I think I spoke pretty firmly. I'm, I'm good, you can. Perfect. All right. Josh, whenever you are ready, the time starts when you start speaking. Thank you. It's uh, an, an appropriate topic just one year after the death of George Floyd, an open wound and still a, a blight on our, on, on our country's reputation. I won't comment on as mayor, it's inappropriate for me to comment on the race inclusivity task force in the school, other than to say that I'm glad that the school is pursuing the matter. I would say that everyone has a duty to reevaluate not only how they treat those of other races, but how they think of them. We do need to examine our minds. We need to examine our hearts. For the city, that means that it will behave equitably in all it does, from its staffing to its provision of services to residents, including its policing. We did, of course, recently complete our state-mandated police review. 
we had a very good result in terms of perception of our police department and an awareness of only a very small number of complaints. There were, however, suggestions for improvements, particularly additional training ideas, some of them directed at additional racial, in racial sensitivity, including implicit bias training, which will be taken, taking place. Separately, and an, initi an initiative that I'm proud to have advanced now for a couple of years, we do have body cameras they're about to be deployed. Our PBA is, unlike some other PBAs, quite enthusiastic about this. And I'm looking forward to having body cameras with our officers to help them do their work and to help us all have confidence in the work that they're doing. So in summing, I hope we as a city and community can do better. We have to do better in our country as well. We must. We have to do better by each other, all of each other. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Danielle. Now, Rye has been notably unreceptive to LGBTQ plus issues. For example, the drag queen read aloud at the library, which was canceled amid protest and the massive amount of pushback received by the movement to raise a pride flag in town. What are your plans to create a community which is more accepting and supportive of its LGBTQ plus citizens? Pardon, just as a reminder, Mayor Cohn, you'll be answering first for this question, so whenever you're ready. Okay, so I, I start needing to correct a misapprehension in the, in the question. There was no pushback against raising the pride flag. To be clear, I'm a supporter of the LGBTQ plus community. I had a pride flag on my lawn last June. I was advancing a city flag raising last June until the city's attorney raised the risk that we might lose control of the flagpole in the future. I then organized the pride celebration we held on the Village Green last year. The question was never the pride flag. The question was the other flags that might later demand a place on the pole. I did hear from people who don't want the pride flag raised and who knows, may have their own ideas for other flags. I can choose the pride flag for my own lawn without that worry. I don't have that luxury as mayor. I need to protect the city. Boston spent three years in court fighting not to fly a flag that it did not want. I needed to find out if Rye faced that risk. The Boston decision is not binding in New York. What the federal government does at embassies is not relevant. What several other jurisdictions have done without investigation is unhelpful, and so on. We hired a lawyer with relevant experience and a duty to the city and for $3,000 received the advice we needed, including the news that New Rochelle, actually our neighbor, offered precedent, having prevailed over a group that wanted a don't tread on me flag on a city flagpole. We found that precedent that we needed, and we also created a policy in the form of a code change to keep future councils out of trouble. It was good work, I think, it was never a fight with anyone, least of all with GSA. I was happy to hear from the students. In fact, I offered to meet with them in early April. Some of what was said to the council by others was hurtful. As for what to do to make the city more hospitable for the LGBTQ plus community, I'm really open to learning from, from the LGBTQ plus community, from the Pride group and from GSA. One small thing that we're doing, and I wanna give a shout out to a Rye High School student who is our intern for a month in City Hall, Lucas Kavulik, 
who is starting on rendering our city charter gender neutral. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Danielle, whenever you're ready. Sure. Um, so there's a whole lot to, to bite off here. So I'm just gonna start with one thing. Being a leader means making choices about your values. So I'm gonna start with that. And where your values are and my values would be to raise that flag. I didn't need a lawyer to tell me that. So that's number one. Our county does it, our neighbors do it. And I didn't need to pay a lawyer two, $3,000 to tell me that. Um, and if New Rochelle had an issue, I could call our friend Noam Bramson, the mayor of New Rochelle, because I also have relationships with neighboring mayors and municipalities. Um, also, um, as a member and co-founder of Pride, um, that stemmed from the what happened at the Drag Queen Story Hour. So from those incidents can come good things. So I, I do wanna say that there are silver linings. Um, so I am proud of our community that rallied and what happened last year on the lawn, um, the Village Green, was a wonderful day. Um, and I am very proud of the GSA um, because they spoke up and they spoke out and they were brave and they have made Rye history. But because of them, this June and every June, we will raise the pride flag. And in the Rye Historical Society archives, they will forever be remembered for the people who had the courage and the guts to speak out and no matter what, come up against this city council and not be fearful and speak their mind. And because of them, we will raise the pride flag. And I am the candidate that is endorsed by the Stonewall Democrats um, because I have always fought for LGBTQ plus rights. And I'm very proud of that. And I will continue to do that. I've done it my whole adult life, not just because there's an election. All right, thank you for your answer, Danielle. Um, moving on. Climate change is one of the most important issues facing our generation. Uh, I know recently our town's implemented a composting program, but that only remains temporary. Um, going forward, this question's for you first, Danielle. Uh, as mayor, how would you plan on expanding the town's existing environmental policies? So currently the food scrap program is, as you said, that's right, only temporary. The food scrap program is actually one of the most uh, popular programs that has been implemented in the city. Um, and it's not only good for the environment, but it's also good for the bottom line. Unfortunately, the mayor has put an, um, it, random arbitrary 85% uh, participation rate on the curbside part of it, or he will cut that part of the program. Um, and that is unfortunate because uh, that is the uh, part of the program that I've heard um, that is the most popular part. And we want to encourage people to, to grow that part. We want people to use um, the food scrap program. And the way to do that is um, utilize our resources, Rye TV. Um, you know, the mayor sends out all his emails. Use, use his emails to share why food scrapping is a good program. We also have um, our solar panels. There should be, there's an application permit, a one, two, three program. There should be a municipal pro program. We should be using our green efficient programs that are also good for our bottom line. There are multiple programs out there and we should be encouraging those. Green is good for the bottom line. That is where we are going in this world. We need to move Rye into the 21st century. 
All right, thank you. And same question for you, Josh. Okay. So beginning with food scraps, I believe food scrap recycling is on its way to becoming an important part of our environmental effort. We were early relative to most other municipalities in Westchester to start a food scrap drop-off program a couple of years ago. Now about half the munis in Westchester have such programs. We also created a food scrap curbside pickup test program at the same time. Only Scarsdale has food scrap curbside pickup. Our test has had participation issues, most prominently with a relatively low weekly participation right, rate. And this with eager volunteers as our participants when we send around a, a garbage truck to pick up other forms of recycling, we're hitting 90% or above in terms of people having cans out. With food scraps, we're hitting 60%. Ultimately, a full curbside program would either disrupt other existing DPW services or require additional staffing and perhaps equipment. So ultimately, a community view will be required. There's also an underlying conceptual problem. All our food scraps travel 100 miles to Ulster County to be composted. Per New York State's study, food scrap recycling produces a negative environmental cost benefit analysis if trucked to a site more than 50 miles or perhaps even less away from its source. Right now, according to that study, we do better environmentally sending our scraps to the electricity producing incinerator in Peekskill. That's not me, that's the New York State study. That won't always be the case, of course, if the county can find a way to recycle closer to home, if not in Westchester itself. That looks like it's still years away, giving us time to learn how to do food scrap pickup correctly. With respect to sustainability generally, I have made my own outreach to Sustainable Westchester to have them come and look at city properties for solar installation. My administration has, has forwarded the Save the Sound settlement, a uh, very, very important pollution, sewage pollution settlement. We've made Westchester Power's green power supply available to Rye residents. We've restored tree city status, encouraging city planting of native trees. We've supported the no idling day. We, we have supported introduction of community solar and grid rewards power, oh, sorry, power oriented programs from sustainable Westchester. Thank you. Thank you both so much for your responses. Um, for our next question, as the threat of climate change grows, Weather patterns are getting more extreme and coastal communities like Rye are facing increasingly severe storms. What are your plans as mayor to develop an infrastructure that combats the damage caused by extreme weather and prevents extended power outages? Um, mayor Cohn, you'll be answering first for this one. Could you repeat the question, please? Yes, sir. Um, as the threat of climate change grows, weather patterns are getting more extreme and coastal communities like Rye are facing increasingly severe storms. What are your plans as mayor to develop an infrastructure to combat the damage caused by extreme weather and prevent extended power outages? Thank you. So beginning with trying to prevent extended power outages, I had, un I had the unfortunate experience of being mayor through winter storms Quinn and Riley and through the recent summer storm Isaias. After each of those storms, I participated in a governmental group, that is a, a, an ad hoc group composed of governmental representatives from across Westchester, from the county on down, and actually including some of our state representatives it was called United Westchester. I was on the board in each of its iterations and participated in the study of Con Ed and other utility performance, not only Con Ed, but Fios and, uh, I'm sorry, Verizon 
and optimum in the most recent iteration. So I am actively at work in our community. Um, I work with Con Ed. I have good relations or good working relations with the Con Ed governmental people and am, I think, reasonably knowledgeable and prepared to help with the effort of getting our utility to do better in keeping us together in response to storms. Uh, other, otherwise, um, I'm looking forward to rekindling our master plan. Um, and my opponent was actually sitting behind me on the dais in 2019 when we collectively put the master plan on hold because we saw the city had other pressing priorities. And then my plan to restart it in 2020 announced in my state of the city message was scuttled by the pandemic. It's very difficult to start a master plan during a pandemic. We don't know exactly what the patterns of life in Rye will be after the pandemic and actually having master plan processes with community meetings is has been impossible during the pandemic. So we will get back to that and environment and sustainability will be an important part of that. Our police department is in talks at this point and our, our city staff generally with the state about a collectively working on rise storm response. We are reviewing at this time the vehicles and actually winnowing the excess of vehicles we have for rescue and the like. But all in, we're, 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 we're working towards the goal of a better enduring ride. Thank you, Danielle, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, I, I do just quickly want to refer to something about the um, food scrap recycling, because I know it is something that is very important to this community. Um, currently, um, our food scraps are going to two places. One is possibly Ulster, but we also have a um, food scrap location is Sustainable Material Management, which is in Cortland. So Cortland is not um, that far away. Um, and that is directly from Westchester County. So I, I did want to clear that up uh, for the record. Um, so now back to um, the question, thank you. So we have an outdated um, technology. We have an outdated study. Um, we've been talking about an emergency management uh, plan now for over a decade. We would definitely need a new study and something in place um, immediately. You know, Scarsdale has on their website um, that something that in case of a hundred year uh, uh, storm, which we know does not happen every hundred years, it can happen multiple times a year, what the community would do in, in that case, we need to have something like that um, and we need a study to implement that immediately. Um, and it is part of a larger plan to get our community again into the 21st uh, century. I also do want to point out to the mayor as he talks about the master plan, I do not or did not sit behind you. I sat next to you. Um, so just again, for the record, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you guys for your uh, responses. Um, the next question, starting uh, with Danielle, is New York State announced that it would start legalizing recreational marijuana. Could you explain your plans as mayor about how Rye will handle this and address the growing presence of recreational marijuana in our community? especially given the town's painful history with drugs. Pardon, just to clarify, um, Danielle, we'll be having you answer first for this one. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
So um, thank you for the question. This is something that has come up a lot and I, I do wanna thank Nancy Pasquale and RIACT for their work on this issue for a long time. When I was on the city council, one of the things that we had discussed, uh, actually working on the gun safety issue, we had looked at rezoning. We had looked at, in fact, it was related to the gun shop in Harrison. We had looked at possibly looking at rezoning um, and that would have actually addressed some of the issues that would have actually fallen on this issue, this very issue right now. Um, but the mayor actually, um, he dismantled that gun safety committee that I was working on with my um, Republican colleague, Terry McCartney. So unfortunately it's left us as a community um, sort of vulnerable um, to the possibilities of, of, a, of a possible, you know, uh, pot shop coming in. Um, but we await right now um, messaging from, from the county and from the state. I do not want to see something like that in our community. I think that, again, knowing our history, you know, when I became a city council member, it was right around that time, as, as you mentioned. And I went to multiple funerals right around that time. It makes, it stays with you. Um, and it becomes a part of who you are and why you want to be a public servant and why you wanna do more for your community. At least it does for me. And I know it does for Nancy, and I know it does for members of RI Act. And so I will follow Nancy's lead on this. I am not the expert. I don't claim to be. So I will take my lead from Nancy Pasquale on this. Excellent, thank you. Josh, whenever you are ready, you're more than welcome to get started. Okay, I'll use this opportunity to to uh, clear up quickly some misstatements from my opponent. Uh, one, um, neither uh, myself nor my council ignored retailers on Purchase Street. We amended the Purchase Street Plaza model a couple of times in response to retailers opening from Haviland to Locust first and then from Locust to Smith, we reconfigured in other ways as well, providing diagonal parking and the like to try to make it work better for everyone. Um, and we are not delivering food scraps to Portland. We go where the county goes and the county goes, and I checked this recently, to Ulster. The Cortland site, at least according to the county, is not up and running yet, and it's very small. It will not have the capacity to help the county in a big, in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Jagger Epstein spoke about uh, whether she was sitting behind me or alongside me. I think the important thing is that she was there. However, when I give the state of the city dress, I stand in front of the dais at a podium. Um, and then finally, I dismantled the No Gun Safety Committee. There was no formal committee. Ms. Tagger Epstein had the option of introducing her legislation. I simply asked for her to wait until we got our breath as a council. With respect to um, marijuana, we passed a no, smoke, no smoking, no vaping legislation recently to limit city properties that might become how shall I say, green rooms. But as to the question of having marijuana dispensaries, we have a little time to consider our opting out or in and the related sales tax matter. We're having staff review and they're gonna help inform us. My own starting point is of one skeptical of pot use 
and feeling that we don't need to increase what will be POTS easy availability. So for me, more thought and more learning before a decision. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Um, going forward, if you guys don't mind, I would request that we keep the answers uh, focused on the questions, not on responding to the other candidates' points of view. Um, and then I guess I will move on to the next question. As a civics club, we're really concerned about community engagement. We've obviously hosted this event and also voter registration drives in the past. Um, as mayor, what are your plans to engage the community and make sure high school students feel like they're involved in uh, the decisions that are made? And that starts with uh, you, Josh. Sorry. That's, that's a great question. Um, and in the course of, well, I'll begin my question for asking your help with the answer, uh, perhaps af after this session. Um, it's, it's a matter of some interest and discussion. Um, we have thought, excuse me, thought and have not executed on the idea of having um, essentially high school city council reps. And uh, I'd appreciate having a discussion with the civics club on the viability of that idea. Uh, uh, obviously, you, the reps would not be actual voting reps in, in terms of, of, of the, the official poll of the city council, but having advisory reps helping the city council understand what the view is from the perspective of, of of those in young adulthood would be in, enormously helpful. Uh, I know that our CCAC is looking to bring uh, one or more high school people onto CCAC, which will put one or more high school people into the planning process. That's an idea that, uh, that I, I have, um, it's not my place to approve it, I have endorsed. I think is the better thing to say. So we're looking for ways to do that, and uh, I welcome I welcome your for your further thoughts. All right, thank you, and Danielle, whenever you're ready. Sure. So, what's going to be the driving force to get 16, 17, 18 year olds out? It's going to be things that matter to, to you, I believe, or I hope. So it's the environment, it's social justice, it's the things that you'll, you know, maybe get out of bed for, you know, before 11 a.m. maybe. So that's what we have to try and engage you on, you know, and not speak down to you and treat you as an equal and engage you and respect you. That's the way we're going to keep you engaged because this is, and I've said this to you guys, I'm not doing this for, for me. I'm doing this for the future, for, for you, for, my kids for the future generations of, of Rye because that's what matters. So I hope that this interests you um, because it's really important. So I, I want to be passionate about it and I want you guys to be passionate about it, but it's, it's got to be things that inspire you because garbage is boring, but if we find things that are inspiring about it, like the food scraps and why it's important, then you guys will be inspired too. So, you know, whether it's having conversations, talking on the phone or me, you know, or, you know, having council members or people coming into school and communicating, 
whatever you think will be interesting to you, then that's what we'll do. Um, and we'll find ways to connect. Um, and again, you know, take, take our lead from you um, on issues that matter to you, not to us necessarily. Because you're the future. So I'm just old. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Josh. We've left, we've left this question for last since as students, this policy doesn't necessarily directly impact us. What changes will you make to the existing fiscal policy over the course of your term? And why do you believe these are important? Sorry, and that starts with you, Danielle. Sure. So it's, it's very simple. Right now, I believe that a couple of things can be done. Um, th there's no question that we've remained under the tax cap. We've, you know, so on the surface, it looks good, but we've spent outrageous amounts of money on outside attorneys and consultants on things we do not need. Number one, number two, ad hoc uh, planning on, on, you know, when we should be having a master plan. The master plan is the key because it is a long-term uh, plan. It is a, also a budgeting plan because it is a, gives you a capital improvement plan for everything. As we watch our sort of this ad hoc piecemeal, that is 10 times more expensive than this long range plan. Um, when you do that, the way that it's been done these last couple of years, um, then sort of having a collaborative effort with residents, city staff, professionals, with a vision of the way we want our community to look. And instead, we're throwing money away on consultants who come in and then nothing gets done. There's another plan. We throw away money on consultants, nothing gets done. And that's the way it's been for the last few years. So if you eliminate that, you find yourself saving money. And we know, again, we have limited sources of new revenue streams. We know that as a municipality, our money our money sources are limited. But if we're smart and we're efficient and we have a plan, an actual plan, and we actually follow through with it, we can be more efficient with our money. All right, thank you, Josh. Yes, thanks. So, Fiscal, <coughs> excuse me, fiscal policy. Uh, our, our, our fiscal policy is to be lean and effective. Um, where I see places we can save as we go forward or in our immediate future are um, first with respect to the very, very substantial capital improvement program we're putting in place. We're expecting to spend between 20 and $25 million on infrastructure, badly needed infrastructure improvements in the city and making cash management decisions with respect to the timing of the bond issuance, the choice of use of funds, our mix of grant monies, our mix of capital reserve fund, and the actual bond funds itself will be very, very important. Maintaining the budgetary line as we build will be very important too. This is going to be no frills building uh, of, of a renewed courthouse, of new buildings at DPW, of uh, ripping out the 1965 
in hugely environmentally wasteful HVAC system in City Hall. All that has to be done most, most frugally. And then with respect to cost containment as well, we have to balance the use of staff, overtime, and consultants. And you must understand, City Hall looks like a big building. There are three or four people in there doing everything. And they have their own specialties, but not all specialties. So in order to get the work done that we need to get done, we very, very badly need consultants to advise us. Excuse me. So for example, in the case of the HVAC system, it is a consultant who teaches us about how to put a new HVAC system in, in City Hall. Uh, it's consultants who will advise us on aspects of the new courthouse and so on down the road. And we use consultants when we need an expertise that we don't expect to need full-time in-house. That is, we, they, we don't want to hire the expertise permanently. The more we do, the more help of this sort we need. We have to do it carefully, but we very much have to do it. All right, thank you both so much for doing this. Um, that exhausts our questions. We do want to leave time for each of you to give a small closing statement. Um, you get two minutes each for the closing statement. Um, you can address any uh, claims that have been made or any topics you want that haven't been covered yet. And since Josh opened the debate, we're gonna start with Danielle. Sure. I, I just do wanna to refer to the consultant's um, comment. Um, of course, we all hire consultants. We hire them at home. We hire them in our businesses. But when we hire consultants, we want to make sure that there's a follow through. So to be efficient, to be thoughtful, we want to make sure that as a city, we're hiring consultants for work that we're actually going to follow through on, not hire consultants and then have no follow through, which is what happens a lot lately. So that's, that's one thing. So we have a lot of work to do because there's been a lot of talk over the last few years about a plan, a plan about a courthouse, which is long overdue and mandated by the state, but nothing's gotten done. And a plan to replace a 1965 HVAC system, but hasn't gotten done. In 2018, 2019, and 2020, we heard the state of the city by the mayor about a plan and nothing has gotten done. And in fact, in 2021, the mayor didn't even give us a state of the city. There's been hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on outside legal fees and consultants. Very little public authorization. We don't even know what that money's been spent on. We have an outdated master plan. We need new tree ordinance. We need updated zoning laws. There's concern over flooding. There are things that we need to do now Thank you so much, Josh, whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. A wise old city manager warned me early on when I became mayor that government is slow. He suggested setting only a few big goals for an administration, knowing that circumstance would deal plenty of the unanticipated and seriously distracting. He was right. From Storms Quinn, Riley, and Isaias to the pandemic, just to name a few, he was right. But with the help of a small but excellent city staff, we're getting things done and we can do more. What's to come? Why shouldn't I leave and hand it off to others? 
I want to see it done or well on the way to done from infrastructure renewal to solving the riddle of land use in our fully developed city. I'd like to see a well-planned, well-paved, and well and cordially tended and policed city with a tax rate that allows people to stay in the wonderful community that Rye already is. I hope to have the opportunity to help. What are some of the things that I see on the horizon soon continue to manage through the COVID crisis and its after effects? Continue implementation and financing of the capital investment program. Continue implementation of the grant programs that my administration won with respect to flooding, Forest Avenue sidewalks, sewers, etc. Review local laws on leaf blowers, tree law, blasting and rock chipping, certain aspects of zoning and amend those laws as appropriate. Accelerate our road repairs, update the master plan and review zoning laws in full. Continue resolution of the fire department command structure and more. And thank you, thank you so much to the Civics Club for having us this evening. Thank you both so much for your time um, that exhausts this debate. Um, I would just like to remind everyone who is still on the call that the Democratic primary is on June 22nd. Um, if you're not registered to vote, uh, we might hold another voter registration drive within the school. Um, and so you can register there as a student or you can register online as an adult. Um, thank you again so much for coming and enjoy the rest of your nights. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Great job, you guys. Thanks. All right. Thank See you guys. guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are we sitting on us four? Us five. Yeah, we can't. I'm just gonna stop the recording. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Ooh, good reminder. <laughs> oh, it says a link to the recording will be added to the event, and everyone in the guest list will be given. I don't.